no need Mandarin is okay. Yeah, who am I? Let me do a very brief introduction first. I'm currently uh, an assistant professor in finance in the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. You, but can you guess what is my first job? Yeah, as maybe you can see from the figure here, yeah, my first job is to betting in the horse racing market. Yeah, that is like every Wednesday evening or Saturday afternoon. Maybe you can go to the Happy Valley or <coughs> in our court. Then you have the uh, betting opportunities in the horse racing market. And if you think twice, horse racing is very similar to doing an investment. You put some money there, and later they will give you some re uh, results, some, uh, some outcomes. Even you win the game or you lose the game. Yeah, this is my first job. First job taught me how to think about the investment in the market. And uh, I learned that predicting the distribution is more important than just having a point estimations. Yeah, and also uh, uh, I learned another skill is that how to calculate the odds and how, how to calculate my bets in the market. And later I will share with you more about it because horse racing is the easiest way to bet on the market. Even in the financial market, you can see later I will give you some examples, some historical story about horse racing, blackjack, all those gamblings and the investment in the Wall Street. Actually, they are more or less the same. And even usually people think Wall Street is the largest casino all over the world. Yeah, because of that, later I joined Morgan Stanley in New York. I worked in New York for a while and uh, I used to be the person in charge of the China Corn team. And uh, in Wall Street, in Morgan Stanley, I also do similar work. Yeah, I try to calculate the distribution of the market and to decide how to bet on the market. And actually something are very similar in the horse racing or in Morgan Stanley. Um, but you know, my research or my academic experience is that I got a PhD in finance. And later, uh, after working for a while in Morgan Stanley, I decided to join the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. And uh, in Polytechnic University, uh, Hong Kong Polytechnic University, I also studied how to predict the market and how I can um, combine some uh, calculation, computation, together with investment together. Yeah, so this is my brief instruction and this is my experience in the past several years. Yeah, be a gambler at the beginning and later join some investment bank as a coin trader, but later come back to become, uh, become a professor in Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Yeah, as you can see that everything seems quite different from each other. Yeah, and particularly today, we would like to talk about AI plus investment. Maybe you will ask, What's the similarity about betting on a horse racing game or using AI to do the investment? I will tell you very soon, yeah. Uh, if you do have any questions or any ideas, you can leave your message on the chat board or maybe just uh, tell me. Uh, sorry, I have to mute you guys uh, who just entering into the room. Okay. Uh, so let's have a quick conceptual idea about what a finance, what an investment. Yeah, what a finance, actually dating back to around 70 years ago, there's no topic or no subject called finance. And at the time, maybe they think this is a subcategory of the financial economics. Then we know the definition of financial economics or just the definition of economics in the Econ 101 class. People will tell you from the micro uh, perspective, Usually, this is a definition of decision making un under uncertainty. Yeah, you are making some decisions. But from the macro perspectives, usually the economic definition is defined as the efficient allocation of resources. All kinds of resources, no matter whether this is social resources, labor resources. And uh, particularly, if we are calling the financial economics the definition will be efficient allocation of financial resources. Yeah, this sounds very academic, very academic. So we have a more specific case, which is investment. Okay, if you read the textbooks, will tell you that the investment, uh, investment definition is that consumption smooths over time. This sounds very academic 
or maybe you can think this is just one type of efficient allocation of financial resources. So we use some normal language. It's really simple. That is save today. I can get more tomorrow. Okay, so idea very simple. I have some more surplus in hand. I have some surplus resources in hand. I can lend it to others in exchange the others additional resources tomorrow. Okay, so this is the basic idea of investment. We do not need to care about the two academic definitions. Just understand the basic concept is that save today, get more tomorrow. Yeah, this is the basic idea of investment. And also we mentioned that another definition of finance is that decision-making under uncertainty. So as a result, investment in not only a switch of financial resources over time, over location, over different people, but also they do have some risk in this procedure. So for example, for example, uh, I can give you an example. Now, uh, for example, Professor Jing want to borrow $1 from you guys. Whether you are willing to lend it to Professor Jimmy? Yeah, maybe you will say yes, because you are a professor in PolyU. I know who you are. You have some trust. And also lending you use the money is not high risk. However, if someone, stranger, you never see him before to enter into the, uh, the office to ask whether you can lend me $1, maybe you say no. Yeah, because you never see this guy before and you think the risk of returning the money to you is much higher, okay? So also another possibility is that Professor Jimmy, you just give me $1 back tomorrow. It's not a fair game. You should give me more. Otherwise, why I should give you the money today? There's no difference between today and tomorrow. Then I may say, hmm, this is a very good suggestion. Why not? I give you $2 back tomorrow, right? Now you see that you save $1 today and tomorrow you have the possibility to get Professor Jimmy's back $2. You have more tomorrow. That is one type of investment, okay? And you will measure whether the risk is too high or too slow or too low. Yeah, for example, Professor Jimmy is a professor in Polytechnic University. Maybe you think the risk is not that high. It's okay for me to afford the loss of one dollar, right? So, but for a stranger, since you never see this guy before, maybe it's not a good decision to invest one dollar uh, to lend to this guy, right? So investment is always related to the risk and return in this case. Then you will say our topic today is AI plus investment. What is AI here? Okay. We also see the definition of AI. AI is so popular everywhere and uh, every, every people is talking about artificial intelligence. So if you read the definitions, there are lots of definitions of artificial intelligence. Usually, they can be defined as intelligence by machines. That is, machine can do something for you, okay? And uh, if you read some articles from MIT initiates on the uh, digital economy, and they will tell you, huh, one possible cat uh, <coughs> categories of AI can be included in the machine learning, natural language processing, robotics, and others. And you see all oh, these terms looks very fancy. I don't know what they are. I can use some, some common language to help you to understand that. For the machine learning, usually they try to better predict the relationship between input and output. Natural language processing is to discover the hidden information in the annual reports and the other reports. Robotics is usually to automatically process the information. Or oh, then you see, huh, this sounds very straightforward idea, yeah. And uh, why the AI can be combined together with investment? The idea is also simple and straightforward. That is, we want to apply the AI tools in the domain of investment. All these are just the methodology, are the tools. Without the domain knowledge, it's just a tool. But with the domain knowledge, maybe we can, we can help out to make a better decision-making in this procedure. And in today's lecture, uh, I have the basic idea that um, we want to create a specific AI algorithms together with you guys using high school math together. And also to use the domain knowledge to solve one type of questions together. We want to, um, as you can see from AI, actually the combination of mathematics and the computing, right? So we want to use a tool similarly 
to solve an investment question together. Yeah. And uh, we can also see that how the AI can be applied to investment. For example, we're talking about a very traditional low and hold strategy, which is usually for every individuals or so institutional investors can, can be used this strategy in the market. They have three stages in, uh, in general. The first stage, you just do the stock selection. That is, I select several stocks in the market. For example, I want to select HSBC, I want to select Bank of China, Hong Kong, I want to select Tencent and others. Yeah, first stage, uh, doing the stock selection. Second, for example, I have already select HSBC, Bank of China, uh, Hong Kong, and also Tencent. The next question I may have is that, how to allocate my money into these three stocks? Maybe I can allocate 1% in the HSBC, 20% in the Hong Kong, uh, Bank of China, uh, Hong Kong, and remaining 79% into Tencent. Or maybe I just give 33, 33, 34 different percentage to the individual asset, right? Individual stocks, this second stage, because for example, totally you have $100, how you can allocate this $100 into three or four different stocks. And usually the last stage is to decide how much money you should put into uh, in total. Maybe you have $100, possibly you can put $80 uh, in this investment, or maybe you can borrow some money from the bank and you can invest more than $100, like $200 in the market. Yeah, this is the basic idea about leverage. And the, for example, how the AI can be applied to the stock selection, usually the machine learning can help a lot. They can help you to ident identify which stock maybe have superior performance in the next period. And sometimes natural language processing can also be helped because natural language processing can discover the hidden information in the annual report. As a result, I can figure out which company will perform very good in the next period, right? In the stock selection part, machine learning and the natural language processing can help out. Um, but we do not go too much details here. And also the waiting part, um, yeah, because the investment procedure is always using the historical information to predict the futures. And the waiting is also some uncertainty about the future. As a result, the so machine learning can also help out. Yeah, actually I can give you a very brief idea about it. That is, yeah, if you see this, this guy, and this guy is called Harry Markowitz. Uh, Harry Markowitz, who won the Nobel Prize in 1990s, in 1990s. Uh, and also, if you read the Nobel Prize winner's quotes, it says that this guy won the Nobel Prize because he designed the theory of portfolio choices. And also he studied how to optimally invest in the asset with different expect return and risk. And even there's a funny story happened to this guy. This guy wrote this paper in 1952, in 1952, that's dating back to around 70 years ago. However, even he wrote this very impactful paper, he cannot get a PhD degree. Yeah, because he was studying economics in University of Chicago. And he asked, yeah, why can't can, 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 can I get a PhD degree? His supervisor said that, oh, you are doing something called finance. Finance maybe not a part of economics, so you have done some work, but cannot fulfill our dietitian requirement. But also this guy usually think of as the father of the modern finance theory. And because after that, after that, there happens to be a new subject called financial economics. Yeah, and also later, after more than, uh, more than 30 years, around 30, 80 years, this guy won the Nobel Prize. And the one issue is that, he studied the issues about second stage, that is, Given you have the risk and return for yeah. every individual stocks or asset, how can I decide how much money to be allocated? How much money should I allocate it to different assets? This is related to waiting scheme, right? You have $100, you select four stocks. Maybe I give, you give $25 per, uh, per, uh, per stock, or maybe you get $50 to first stock for the remaining, you give 30 stocks, uh, for 50 stocks, that is possible. But that is, Given the risk and returns, you have to decide the weightings. Yeah. However, in real practice, the theory cannot work very well. The major reason is that 
the theory of using the historical data to construct the information, but purely use the historical data sometimes gives you gives you big trouble. Machine learning is helping you to forecast the future, to predict the future. Yeah, for example, the old idea used historical data and more or less like you just look at the target, then shoot. Maybe you are exactly shooting at the center as a target, but sometimes because of trouble of your hand, you will get one points, 10 points on average, maybe five points. So machine learning is trying to give you a stand and you put your gun on the stand and maybe you are still looking at the target at the center, maybe because of the stand, it becomes some bias. It has some bias in the decision-making. However, it can significantly reduce the uncertainty in the future. So on average, every time you get nine points, so the performance will be much better than the original idea. Okay, so this is some basic idea about how the machine learning can be used in the waiting because they help you to reduce the future uncertainty in this case. And the last, we want to discuss about how to decide the leverage and uh, why the leverage is so important and how we can use the AI tools, use the domain knowledge to build up a simple model to solve this issue together using some high school or middle school math, we are able to solve it. Yeah, and we can, AI is a combination of mathematics and computational tools. And here we'll also use some tools and make it useful in the leverage. Let's look at uh, the history of the leverage part, why it is so important and what's the theoretical conclusions and what's the estimation loss in this procedure. And in practice, how we can use it. Okay, why is the leverage matters? That is deciding how much of total money you should put in the investment. Of course, the conclusion is very simple because it can help us to make the total wealth grow faster. And you say, can you give me, give me a better example? Yes, we can give you the Warren Buffett example. If you look at historical performance of Warren Buffett, actually, which are good, but not that superior, they have the historical performance is that access return is around 19% with a volatility 25%. Okay, so this is some historical data we are able to get about Warren Buffett. Why he can still become the richest people all over the world? The secret is, sorry, I have to admit one, 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 more, one more student here. Here, the secret is that he's always using a leverage equal to 160% or 1.6. That's the secret, that's simple? Yes, it's very simple. He really used this very consistent leverage in the past 40 years. And with a uh, maybe uh, not bad, still good historical performance, but not superior performance. With a very stable leverage, made he, made Warren Buffett become the richest people all over the world. The tool he used is sometimes called Kelly's formula, Kelly's formula, and uh, which was invented by uh, John Kelly Jr. And also sometimes this formula is also called fortune's formula. But actually, so John Kelly Jr., this guy, he never worked in Wall Street or any financial institutions. His whole life is a scientist in Bill's lab and never, never, never ever worked in the financial industry. He's just a scientist. How the scientists can be linked together with uh, rich people? We will see this story together. And uh, there is someone, very famous one called Edward Sop. And usually people think he is the first quantitative hedge fund founders. And also this guy wrote a book called Be the Dealer. And the dating back to around 40 years ago, actually he was not a um, um, financial guy at the beginning. He used to be a mathematician. You know, he got PhD from UCLA and later working at MIT. But when he was working at MIT as an assistant professor, he is not interested in doing research. He is interested in how to bet in the blackjack or sometimes called 21. And he tried to think whether I can calculate odds, the winning probabilities in the casinos. And later he figured out he's able to do that. He's able to do that. Yeah. And also later he, uh, he, he still work in uh, MIT, but during the weekend, he will fly to Las Vegas and also bet on the blackjack game. And uh, 
after several rounds, he got so famous because he always win the money. Maybe on average, he can win the money. And later, uh, he got poisoned by the casino owners. Yeah, forbid him to play anymore in the casinos. So the Edward Sob, this guy at the time, still a professor in MIT. He feel, huh, maybe I should change another casinos. Later, he decided he moved to the largest casino all over the world. That is Wall Street. And later, he created his own hedge fund and become very successful. And also, he has saying, no matter I was in the casinos to bet on the backtrack, or maybe in the Wall Street to bet on financial instructions, or any stocks, any options, and others, one major tool we are use is called Kelly's formula because they help us help me to calculate how much money I should invest in every investment opportunities. And also later Warren Buffett met Edward Sop in a big parties together. And Warren Buffett at the time are still not very major investors that they're dating back to 40 years and ask Edward Sop, can you give me some secret about how to become very successful in the investment industry? And uh, Warren Buffett held Edward Sop a secret that is Kelly's formula. And also we will try to repeat the Kelly's formula as a very powerful tools to solve some uh, puzzles in financial industry. And later, of course, another guy, Jim Simons, one of the most successful hedge fund managers all of, uh, in, the, in the history, and also learned this. And he used the tools to bet in the game. We want to replicate the story together because this is actually an AI tool applied in financial finance domain knowledge here. Let's see a very simple example. And uh, as I mentioned there, my first job is about betting on the horse raising. Okay, so we also use horse raising as a very basic idea. How to make some noise in the horse racing betting games. And uh, for the horse racing, this, the idea is very simple. The idea is very simple. At the beginning, stage one, you invest $3, right? That is, for example, I can give you $1 or $2. And also, you should analyze the game. The game has two outcomes, usually in horse racing, right? The first is that the horse you bet wins the game, okay? Case one, wins the game. And uh, you will have your money. Um, you will get uh, $3K back. Yes, that is sound very good because you invest K dollars in this betting game. Okay. If you win the game, you will get the money tripled. You can get three dollars, three dollars back. But of course, the second case is that you will lose the game, right? Then you will lose everything. You will lose K dollars. You will get nothing. Okay. For example, get nothing in this case. So we summarize it. So betting on a horse is similar to betting the market. You put your initial investment, you get some of your money out of your pocket. You put, put there, for example, K dollars. And now you want to enter into a game. The game had two outcomes. The first one is that you get your money triple. If you put $1 there, you will have $3. If you lose the game, you get nothing, right? You lose everything, right? So we use the finance language. You will say the first case is that I can get 200% returns because your initial investment here is just $1, but now you get $3. You can get 200% returns. For second case, we use a finance or investment language, which is negative 100% returns, right? Yeah, I lose everything. I lose, that's why I lose 100%. So this is the definition. So this sounds to be a very good investment opportunities, right? Because here you can always your expected return um, in the game. We assume that the winning probability is 50%. You have half chance to have your money tripled. And uh, lose a game with the probability is also 50%. Now you have some uncertainty about this game because you may lose money with 50%. But overall, it's still a very good game to invest. 
because you have the chance to you have the money to you have the chance to have the positive cash flows in future right then the next question maybe you will have is that given that you have one hundred dollars how much should you invest then you say in that case if you want to maximize your total profit in this case i should put all, all my money here right but the reality is slightly different because for such games, you have repeated game. Maybe this game will appear again, and again, and again. For example, for like horse racing, you will have 100 times to bet on this game. Chance to invest. How much should you invest in this game? Then you will say, oh, I just put all my money in this game. But maybe, unfortunately, you lose everything. You lose everything with a 50% probability. Then you get zero. Then you have no chance to participate in the future games, right? In this case, maybe put all your money there. It's not a good idea. In your investment, it's not a good idea. Then you say, oh, in that case, maybe every time I just put $1 there. And the 100 times, maybe I can get some money. But compared to 50%, you can guess your money tripled. You have 200% return in this case. Maybe $1 too conservative. Then maybe you say, ah, oh, I should choose some number in between, in between. Then how to calculate the accurate number, accurate percentage in this case? This is something we can use AI to solve it. First, we should use the domain knowledge to establish some formula. Then the computer will help us to solve it. And in this case, if we use the mathematical language to rewrite the question that assume that you have initial wealth equal to V0, or maybe here is $100, right? For every period time t equal to zero and t time, uh, time t equal to one, you can choose to invest K dollars in this project, right? Then you have half chance to have your money traveled, and then maybe you have half chance to lose everything, right? And if you have many opportunities to invest in this similar game, how much should you invest? Yeah, maybe you can use some computer to help you to simulate the cases. Yeah, uh, we also have the figure here for you to refer. You can see that if you invest all your money, that's a green line here, you can hardly see it because after two or three games, you lose everything. Then you cannot bet on the game. So you lose everything, which has the worst performance. So maybe you say every time I invest 1% of my wealth in this game, 1% of the wealth in this game, you will see your wealth grows very slowly, very slowly. Maybe you say I invest 50% in this game, which is a brown line. It's very volatile in, in this procedure. The best performance is the 25%, the black line here. That is go very stably to a very large number after 100 times betting on this project. And of course, the green line is also a good choice. But if you compare the difference, which is already very huge, notice that we took the, we, we took the logarithm in this, uh, in this case. Now let's do this. Let's solve this question together using some tools. Math tools, high school math is enough. OK, and uh, we think that we're doing something called uh, in mathematics, first of all, we define the RI as one period of return, follow some distributions. And also we are using something called fractional investment, which is equivalent to the leverage, which means that if you have K dollars, uh, $100, I invest K percent of your $100. If you have $1,000, I invest K percent of the $1,000. So regardless of the initial wealth you have. And also we assume the risk-free rate is just zero. This is just for some, um, Formation, formation. And also as a result, we are able to write down the total wheels, the terminal wheels at V0 equal to initial wheels times the first period returns, second period returns to last period returns. Okay? So this is using our domain knowledge to write down how people think about your future, your future terminal wheels when given all the information you have, right? 
Yeah, and also we know the investment definition that save today, get more tomorrow. So, so here is that we save V0 today and we want to get more for VN days and days later, I want to get more here. But how to maximize your terminal wheels? First of all, let's move this formula to the word file. Let's do this question together. And let's see how we can use some middle school or high school math to help us to solve this issue. And equals to V0 times one plus. K is a percentage in must, but also the leverage parameters in this case. K times R2 plus K times Rn. Okay, so this is definition. And we would like to maximize the terminal wheels, right? So this is the objective of the investment wheels. So that is to maximize the n. So this question equivalent to vn divided by v0 because v0 is a constant. Okay, we use a simple transformation in this case. V0 here they equal to the one plus k times r1 multiply one plus k times r2 until one plus k times rn. And for this one, we notice the right hand side is multiplication. Multiplication not easy to to think about sometimes. Maybe we can change it to submission. Submission much more easier, right? And how to make the multiplication to submission? We know using the high school math. Okay, we can just take the logarithm both sides, right? The left hand side, you take your logarithm, will still keep the same because they have the same monotonicity idea. For the right hand side, if you take the logarithm, the multiplication becomes the submission here. Plus the logarithm, okay, in this case. And so to maximize the VN equivalent to maximize the left hand side. For the right hand side, we know R1, R2, Rn follow the same distributions. So we, we can write one more stage like this way, equal to the submission. Um, maybe we just put some, yeah, let's derive some AI tool together using some simple math. Right hand side is log one plus K times Ri here. So the remaining is just get rid of it, which means that I sum all the ones together. And then now using some simple tool can tell you this one equivalent to expected value of log one plus K times Ri here. I'm oh, sorry, this is K. Now we can throw everything to the computer. Because in the old days, it's all about mathematics, but now, we are able to throw it to a computer to figure out which can k can maximize the total wealth. So we, we conclude that to conclude to, to maximize the terminal wealth to maximize uh, this expected log one plus k times r because the matter which which I you have right so this is some conclusion we can get and the computer the AI can help us to solve this question and of course sometimes we are also able to solve by ourselves like the case what we have and we know that to maximize this value equal to take the derivative equal to zero right so this is for simplify for AI we do a very simplification here EK here because we care about how much you should invest. And the, for the case we mentioned just now, everything are very similar. Yeah, because now this expectation, we don't have to use computer to do that. Otherwise we should use AI to help us to solve it. But now it's very simple. We just set this equal to zero. And uh, in two outcome case, you have 50% to have, because expectation equal to the 50%, 50% to two part. Right, the first is log equals to uh, log times one plus two times k. Right, you have 200% returns. 
right? And the second case is that you have 0.5 times. This is just a special case. I want to show you how to help the AI to solve the issue. But in most of cases, we are unable to solve the issue. We need to use AI to help us to solve it. But here we are able to do some simple uh, simplification in this case. Yeah. And uh, if you see this game, uh, if you see this equation, yeah, this is able to be solved, easily to be able to be solved. Maybe we do some uh, simple math together and we define this equal to zero because they help us to mix math the terminal wells you have. Okay, here, uh, here the first part is equal to, sorry, why I cannot. Okay, 0.5 times, this is two divided by one plus two K. This is high school math, we are able to work it out. Plus 0.5 times minus one, so here is minus one, divided by one minus k here, equal to zero. And we are able to get when the k star equals to 25%, we are able to maximize the terminal wells, which are consistent to our computer tell us. The k, k star equal to 25%, we can achieve the highest average terminal wells in this case. You can see the mathematics and the AI result are exactly the same, are exactly the same. And also this formula, this formula is also called the, takes the, uh, takes the derivative of this equation equal to zero. It's still defined as the Kelly's formula, Kelly's formula. But in real practice, we can still cannot use the idea directly because in practice, the winning probability is the odds and even some continuous case the parameters are unknown. How to get these parameters? Usually we use historical data to estimate the parameters. But the estimated parameters, the using historical data has some limitations. The so first, historical data may be not long enough. For example, there are, um, there are some new, newly listed stock, uh, newly go public stock. They only have one or two years history. So they do not have long enough historical data. So as a result, if we use historical data, we don't have enough data to pull into the AI algorithms. And also another possibility is that even the historical data are long enough, the financial market is usually only local stationary. That is dating back to 20 years ago, the so Google is a relatively small stock, high growth stock, but nowadays Google become a very large stock and also uh, it become a value stock relatively. So as a result, 20 years ago, historical data maybe cannot represent the current data. So historical data become useless comparatively speaking. The third case is that the parameter used, estimated used are not that accurate. And this is something also we call the estimation risk. That is inaccurate estimated parameters sometimes give you inaccurate estimation of the leverage case star here. That is all the parameters we put into this number, like 2.5, you, you, you should all, always estimate 50%, $3, 50%, $0, you should estimate. But you estimate this data, give you the wrong decision-making rules for that. But how we can deal with it? Um, this is a continuous case. Usually one possibility is that we are able to derive the asymptotic distribution for that. And this is also something AI can help us. Yeah, they can help us to derive the, his, uh, the distribution of all the decision-making parameters to see how it affects your decision-making this procedure. And uh, for example, in the continuous time case, we are able to derive an asymptotic distribution Well, following this equation. You don't need to understand what it is. But second is that maybe we can use something related to during the World War II, an algorithm called shrinkage estimations. And uh, what you usually to say, you have better not use so, uh, so uh, aggressive uh, estimation of your parameters. You should be more conservative and use a relatively smaller number to bet in this game. For example, in the Warren Buffett case, in the theoretical result, we are able to calculate the optimal level will be 320%. However, he never used his historical data to do this estimation, or even he use it. He knows he know that we should follow the rule of 
be conservative and have better use some shrinkage, doing some shrinkage in this procedure. So later, accuracy consistent with our practitioner's same rules. He used 160, so which is around 30% shrink in these parameter estimations. Uh, actually, this makes lots uh, make make lots of sense. Yep. Uh, okay, so here today in today's lecture, we are able to think about one very specific question to invest in some project will give you two outcomes. Either you make some money or lose some money. We are able to derive the optimal rules to maximize your terminal wealth when you can repeatedly invest in such projects. And also for a specific case, you can get which 25% is the optimal rules in these procedures. 